We've done a good job here. We've gotten down to that mark that's 16, a sixteenth of an inch above, and we've left just enough pencil line to see that there's a pencil line left there. The base and the treble side markings are still on the bottom, and we're ready to test fit this. One more thing we need to do. This is the original nut, and you'll see that the leading edge is flat, but the edge that is toward the headstock is rounded back, and that too is for comfort. We're going to go ahead and rough shape this one in. It'll be tweaked in later. Again, let's take a look at the original nut. It was rounded over on those ends too, the base and the treble side. There. Now our nut, our new nut blank, truly is roughed in and ready to go back for final fitting. Meet you back, meet you back at the workbench. Let's put the, the new nut in the slot. Still fits very nice. There's some meat sticking out, some bone sticking out here on base and treble side. And I can feel, particularly with my nail, mark the treble side holding it firmly. Mark the leading edge binding, headstock side, binding head uh, leading edge, headstock edge, and hold that, don't let it move, underneath. Now we've got another set of pencil marks. We've got to work down to and I'm just going to go ahead back there, and then I'll meet you right back here. There's no need to watch me sand anymore. All right, this is the second test fit. Gosh, it's really close. I've got a little bit down here. I can move this string out of the way. See, my nail's hitting it. And I'll move these strings up to the top. Nail's hitting it there, too. But not much. It's a, just a tiny amount. So, instead of risking going too far with this, I'm going to show you what I use to fine-tune these by hand. Stuart McDonald has some of the nicest nut files I've ever seen. I can't find these things at hardware stores. I just can't. The tooth uh, on these things are incredible for wood and for bone. They are absolutely great. This nut is so close, I'm going to use uh, the medium and hold it by hand because it's so close now. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit because these, these files work so great that uh, I'd rather do this and take a couple of extra minutes and know that it's exactly right than to take a chance on the machine. Another little test fit. Oh man, I'm close. Just know the angles. Know what you're looking for. Know what you're feeling for. Don't get confused as far as which side was which and which do you need to work on. When in doubt, check it again. That base side is absolutely perfect. Treble side, nearly. I'm going to go ahead and round this over because it's so close. Each banjo neck is going to have a slightly different profile, slightly different width, slightly different angles, depending on who built the neck. These things aren't necessarily cranked out by machine. And even the ones that are cranked out on a CNC machine are finely tuned by a human being. So there's some variances in it. All right, a little bit more. I am so on this. Very close. 
switch to a finer file. It's a nicer look when you're done. It's taking more off the side and the top than I am at the bottom because of my fit's almost nearly perfect now. I'm feeling a little more this way. I am working in close proximity to this banjo. Something else you got to consider too. You don't want to slip and dig into, you know, four thousand dollars worth of somebody's instrument. Even if it's your own, you don't want to do that. Be aware of your surroundings. Know what you're doing before you attempt to do it. Good. I can't feel that transition, so this nut is ready to start fitting the slots. Alright, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to remove this nut. I've got some medium viscosity cyanoacrylate. Uh, this is Hot Stuff Super Tea. You can get this through First Quality Musical Supplies. You can get it through... Um, uh, woodworking supply companies, uh, you can get it at uh, Woodcraft Supply, you can get it through, maybe through Stuart McDonald. Uh, I'm going to put one, one drop, and not a very generous drop. It's a really tiny drop, just a little drop, and that's all. Now I'm going to carefully put this exactly where it needs to be in place. Hold it there for a second. I want to caution you about something here. This is the NCF Quick. This is a accelerator for instant glues. Uh, spray this onto this and this hardens pretty much instantly. However, this banjo it's a very nice instrument. It's finished with lacquer. If you spray this accelerator on a lacquered surface, you're going to get gummy lacquer. So be careful where you use that stuff. It's fine on a Korean instrument. It's fine on a bottom of the food chain something because you could grind that stuff with whatever you wanted and you'd have a hard time getting the finish off because it's not lacquer. Gibsons, Stellings, Hubers, careful with this stuff. Protect the instrument. You know, tape it off if you're going to use that. This is already dried. You know, be patient. Um, just be careful. Now here's the original nut. And the spacing looks really good on this. I want to mark the location of the first and fourth strings very carefully. Make sure it is where it's supposed to be. I like to let that original nut ride up a little bit on top. Now I've got a pencil line where the first and fourth strings were. I'm going to show you what I use um, before I use this uh, this wonderful. Uh, string spacing ruler is, I mark, a starter notch. Now, the string gauges here, uh, these are the, the strings I used on this, it's medium light, it's J, the JD Crow set uh, PF135s for this banjo. Um, the string gauges are 10 thousandths, 11 thousandths on the second, 12 thousandths on the third, and 20 thousandths on the fourth. I am not going to cut these 10, 11, 12, and 20. Um, I don't think that's necessary and I think that will bind the string and the string will ride down. My personal philosophy and professional opinion is uh, cut them a little bit bigger than you need to be. Give those strings a little bit of room to breathe in there. Expansion and contraction you know, it's got to count for something. This is bone. This is natural material. It's going to expand and contract slightly around that string. When you hear things start squeaking and binding, 
I, I'd rather have, I'd rather have three or four thousands or more, you know, slack, knowing that the thing's going to be loose in there, and I can tune it, and I don't have to worry about that. And remember, everybody's right. Just ask them. These, again, from Stuart McDonald. I'm kind of not really plugging Stuart McDonald, but they have great tools. They have great things available. Sometimes um, they're the only people who have it. Sometimes not. But these, you get two, two files in one. I'm going to look above what I'm doing. I use the tip of my finger as a stop. I'm going to get the starter notches going. When I mean starter notches, I mean don't, don't get overzealous here and get too far down. That's what happened to the uh, little last nut, whoever did that. Right on that pencil line. And that's it. Starter notch. Now, the fourth string is a, is a 20,000, so I'm going to use a, a 26,000 uh, file on it. That's plenty of slack. That's only three thousandths of an inch on either side. Of course, it'll ride to one side or the other. I'm going to use again my finger as a stop here, and I can tell you if you want. Also, I've got this this file. Got this file angled back. I want the string to ride off a clean leading edge. I want it to ramp up just like the angles coming here from the headstock and then I want it to ride off a clean not necessarily razor sharp edge. Can't be but so sharp this is a fairly obtuse angle is it not? So, uh, 26K I'm going to keep that angle back. My thumb is uh, finger here is uh, stop guide. Again, that's it. Starter notch only. Uh, you can put a little pencil lead or graphite in here. Not not necessarily for lubrication. So you can see those notches. Now these will allow you every other notch to line up. There. You can see my little mark here. That's where most banjos sort of fall on this rule. And that is perfect. Um, some people scribe these. I, I don't. I line it up over top. Get my light down here good and close. So I can see through that little notch, make sure I've got it lined up. There, and hold it steady. There are the other two notches. With the appropriate sized file, I'm going to go ahead on with these. Starter notches only. Now we're going to string this up, tune this up, and I'll show you how to adjust these to the proper height. We want to leave, probably on a banjo, about five to seven thousandths. I would err on the side of caution of the fourth string. The fourth string is wound when you chain strings or tune a fourth string. It acts more like a saw. Not much, but enough. So you want to leave that a little bit more room. So I generally go five thousandths on these and seven thousandths or so on this. Now the banjo is strung up and I want to show you this action of the nut as it is roughed in. You can see, hopefully, that it's a long way. It's a long way to that fret. So what we want to do is uh, show you how to set the action at the nut. Because there's no way I'd play this banjo 